Welcome to this full flight tutorial for the Topmax Studios F22A Raptor Premium for MSFS. This tutorial will show you how to fly the plane from A to B at supersonic speeds. Tutorials on some of the plane's cooler features will follow at a later date. The F22 Raptor will follow whichever flight plan you've made in the world map, so we'll just zoom out the map a little bit on the MFD so we can see what that looks like. First we'd also want to tune the ILS frequency at our destination. So we'll head over to the Nav1 radio, go Frequency Adjust, and enter the frequency of the runway at our destination airport. We'll then commit that frequency to memory. We'll now head over to the Transponder options, and we'll set the Transponder to ON. So you have a variety of modes here. We're going to select Mode 3A to activate it. With the transponder switched on, we'll head over to the altimeter options and hit B to set local altimeter. We'll now start setting up the autopilot for our flight, so we'll head over to the autopilot options panel. First of all, we'll change our nav source to GPS, so the airplane will follow our flight plan. We'll now activate nav mode, and if we scroll down, we can dial in our desired altitude for our top of climb. So we'll click the soft key next to altitude. We're going to climb near the service ceiling so we'll set 60,000 feet and we'll commit that. We'll now also want to set our desired vertical speed for the climb. We'll set 5,000 feet per minute. With that configured we'll activate the vertical speed lock mode. We're now all set, so we'll head back to the main autopilot panel. Now MSFS remembers your settings from previous flights, so before you fly, make sure Autopilot Master is off. Okay, we're now ready to fly, so we'll gradually bring the throttles up to full military power. On the panel to the lower left hand side, you'll see the engines light up in yellow when the afterburners are on. For takeoff, you want to keep your throttle just below that point. As speed increases, you'll feel the plane will want to take off, so start to pull back on the stick, and when you have positive rate, bring the landing gear up. Now activate the autopilot master, and the airplane will start to follow your flight plan. It should also target our desired vertical speed. Just for reference, this is the position I have my throttle in for takeoff and climb. This is the configuration the airplane should be in during the climb phase, so Autopilot Master is on, the source is GPS, nav mode is active, and the airplane is in vertical speed hold. If you flick over to the steering point menu, you can see the ID of your next waypoint, as well as the distance and time to that waypoint. We'll now take a look at configuring the auto throttle, which is very useful during the climb phase. So if we go to the speed options, as we're above Mach 1, we'll flick it into Mach mode, and then we will hit set speed. We'll want the airplane to hold our current speed of Mach 1.05, so we'll dial that in, commit it, then return to the main autopilot menu, scroll up, and activate the auto throttle. The plane will now maintain our current speed. There seems to be a small bug in this version which means that the physical throttle to the left of the flight deck won't move in tandem with the actual auto throttle inputs. But the auto throttle does work, you'll hear it adjusting up and down. Of course, as you pass through whatever the transition altitude is in the territory you're flying in, don't forget to head to the altimeter page and set the altimeter to standard pressure. A quick refresher of our current airplane configuration during this climb phase. Autopilot on, nav hold, vertical speed hold and Mach hold. So as you pass through about 40,000 feet, you can apply full throttle, which will activate the afterburners and send us on our way towards Mach 1.9. While we're in flight, I'll zoom out the map range to about the 240 mile mark. This is because we'll want to start our descent once our destination reaches that marker. So our top of climb arrives, 60,000 feet, and the airplane levels off. You have two options here to manage your speed. 
you can either decrease the throttle so the afterburners switch off your full military power in supercruise. In this configuration you can expect the airplane to cruise at about Mach 1.5 1.6. Your other option is to leave the afterburners on at a slightly lower power and the airplane will comfortably hold a much faster cruising speed of Mach 1.8 or 1.9. For reference in that configuration my throttle is in this position. Fast forward in a bit, we can now see that our destination is within that 240 mile radius. So it's now time to initiate our descent. We're going to head over to the autopilot menu, our altitude options. We're going to dial in a desired altitude of 2000 feet, so that's 2000 above ground level. For an airport which is 0 feet above sea level, obviously adjust that upwards for airports with higher elevations. We're going to set our vertical speed for descent to minus 3000 feet per minute. And to initiate the descent, we activate vertical speed mode. We'll also idle the throttles here. We'll quickly look at the status display to our left, just as a reminder of the configuration we should be in. Autopilot on, nav hold on, vertical speed on, desired altitude of 2000 above ground level. And the vertical speed itself should be minus 3000 feet per minute. Throttles should be idle. As the airplane starts to get lower and slower, you'll want to put the auto throttle speed mode back into indicated airspeed and set a desired speed of around 300 knots. Once that is set, you can activate your auto throttle and the airplane will target 300 knots for the rest of its descent. And again, a quick configuration check for this phase of flight. Autopilot on, nav hold on, vertical speed on, and auto throttle active to 300 knots. And of course, as you pass through transition altitude during your descent, hit B to set local altimeter. At bottom of descent, the plane will enter altitude hold mode and level off. At bottom of descent, you want to set your desired speed to 200 knots ready for approach. You can also drop the landing gear at this point, and you will see the airplane start to apply flaps automatically. As we get closer to our destination airport, we're going to head over to the radios page and check our ILS information. So you can see here that it's picked up our ILS signal ready for approach. And as we begin our turn towards final, we can activate approach mode and also set our nav source to localizer. So the airplane will start to follow the ILS at our destination. ILS guidance on this airplane is horizontal only. It doesn't seem to follow a glide slope. This means that we'll need to handle the vertical part of our descent manually, which we'll go over in just a second. The first part of setting up for our final approach is to disable the auto throttle. This is because we'll be using our speed as our main way of controlling our descent. I'll also disable the autopilot on final as well, so we can control our roll. From here on out, you'll want to keep the velocity vector, which is the circle shown on the HUD, above the runway. You should do this by using manual roll to control the horizontal part of your approach and use the throttle, not your pitch, to control the vertical. This is an incredibly difficult thing to get right. So if you do want to use pitch to control your descent, it's not exactly cheating, it's just a little bit less realistic. The important thing is that the velocity vector stays where it should be which is ideally over the runway threshold, and that the airplane maintains a good attitude and approach speed. As you get closer to the runway, it becomes more like a normal visual approach. You don't need to apply a lot of flare, just idle the throttle and let the plane settle onto the tarmac. You want to apply the air brake upon touchdown, and when you do that, the nose will hammer down onto the ground.
with touchdown complete just apply brakes and bring the airplane to a stop and that concludes our tutorial flight in the top max studios f22 raptor thank you for watching please drop a like and subscribe if this was useful to you take care and i'll see you next time